So welcome to the lecture 14 session 2 and uh, there is a doubt Manish has a doubt and he has written it seems that we added all the variables. Is that allowed? Sir I have a doubt with this question. So uh, what is your doubt? Your doubt is that this summation how can we do this summation? Is this, is this your doubt? Is this your summation doubt is? In equation 1 in equation 1 okay we are going to find out the summation is it a problem that how can we do this how we add all the variables we are not adding the variables okay uh, just go see what was the uh, marginalization in the marginalization we have find out the summation across all the values of one thing then we can introduce into the formula okay so let me go back and let me tell you this thing that uh, See this formula okay what was the marginalization that if given px if px is given you can introduce one more variable and say that i can uh, if given the formula probabilities are there on xy y is introduced over here na? given the j so if you if you if you understand this formula so just tell me that whether you understand this formula or not can you write yes or not yes you understand this formula okay all right then my work is done so what I what I want to say that here here probability of control Z I think all right. So my work is that probability of probability of X if you want to find out you say that I am going to find out the summation on Z and I am going to probability of X and J okay with the J because you if you find out J over here. Similarly, you can say k also for summation of k, summation of j, probability of x, j and k. Three variables you can introduce. How many variables you wish you can include? But uh, there is a small catch that uh, we have done a short form for, for this thing and we have written summation of kj. Okay, it should be written into this way, but the sum it is just a short form. I am telling that all the possibilities of k and j are there. So now you understand that how we can do this? Your question is clear? Can you say me this that your your doubt is clear? Hmm? Your doubt is clear? Yes, it is clear. All right, thank you very much. Okay, next topic is going to be very interesting topic, and hope you would like this very much. I'm going to tell the stories one by one. Just listen those stories. If you have any doubt, please ask. Okay, let's assume that. Uh, these are the item the first item x1 x2 x3 are the properties say there is a mango I say it is 10 gram mango and uh, it has a weight a 10 gram mango and its uh, radius length is 50 means upper height breadth is 20 I say these two things and I say that its cost is 10 rupees another mango 10 11 gram 32 and uh, 31 length and 22 breadth. I mean I have written these things randomly to therefore don't believe on me I just wanted to say that these values are there and its rate is 12 these things randomly I had generated this table understand this thing so if this is a data given to you and I ask you that there is a mango with the 8 gram mango length is 22 weight is 35 what should be the value so this is the question you want to answer how can you answer this question you understand this question can anybody write yes that you understand this question okay Yes, it is clear. All right. So uh, uh, the one way to go ahead to solve this particular problem, we already know that uh, one way one way could be that you say that uh, I am going to have a linear combination of all those all these things. I am going to have a linear linear combination of all these things. What does that mean? I say that uh, you say that ki you are going to x one is given to you x2 is given to you and x3 is given to you so you say that you are going to multiply with the w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x2 3 plus w0 and this is going to be your value and uh, for this particular cell and for this particular cell okay this is the linear model okay this is the linear model i say because weights are linearly multiplied and what, is, what should be the appropriate value of W that we don't know we have to find out. So there would be some method by which we can find out what is the appropriate value of this W. And if somebody gives me, then given these values, I can efficiently compute it. Uh, so it's clear. 
ये तो समझ में आ गया क्वेश्चन इज कि हाउ टू फाइंड आउट दीज डब्ल्यू ठीक है हम बात करते हैं तो देर इज ए मॉडल दैट टेल्स दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई गिवेन देर शुड बी सम एप्रोप्रिएट वैल्यूज ऑफ डब्ल्यू देर आर डब्ल्यू जीरो डब्ल्यू वन डब्ल्यू एन यू बाई दिस फार्मूला यू कैन फाइंड आउट दिस तो दिस फार्मूला इज अगेन दिस थिंग नॉट ए प्रॉब्लमेटिक थिंग समटाइम you apply want to apply a basis on that is not a different thing i just want to find out that how to find out the right value of w so let me just set aside this thing how to find out the value of w we would talk about this later so let's assume that somebody has given me a w hmm? they are they are they are right or not right i don't know but if somebody gives me the w i can find out these values for all these things so i have computed for this it comes 8 9 3 3 then for this it is also giving me the 6 i can compute these things so if w is given to me i can find out these value i can say that okay this is the final value but then somebody somebody uh, you you may ask that how good this w is so how to find out how good this w is you see whatever value you find out what is the actual value what is the difference and the difference should be minimized okay so how good it is so to answer this question you should say that the difference between first thing is 2 okay here the difference is 3 here the difference is 1 so since 10 minus 8 is 2 12 minus 9 is 3 and uh, 4 minus 3 is 1 22 minus 26 is minus is minus 4 so you sometime you get minus values also this is 5 So to trickle this situation, such as it is minus seven, you say that I am going to take the square of these things. Okay, square of these things, square of these things, square of this, 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 and find out the summation. And say that this is whatever summation I am going to get. It is going to tell me that how good it is. All right, say it. So this is how we say the squared error cast function. We whenever a w is specified to me, I want to see for this w how good my answer is. So this is the formula you can use. No issues. One upon two m summation of all these things means I have find out the summation. I have divided by one upon two m because number of item is m. For one item, how different how distance I I am. So can you tell me that this value should be smaller or for the good function it would be smaller or bigger? if you have appropriate w then this value would be smaller or bigger hmm? smaller ha huh? because then it is the difference would be very smaller and therefore it would be right all right so our task is to find out the w that w arg min of wj means uh, find out those w's which can minimize this particular function this is our task is so how can we find out this basic idea is to push the w's towards its gradient what is the gradient it means to see that how how the things are changing if you know the if you have a function okay if you have if you have a function if you want to find out what the gradient over here you draw a tangent over there so this is the gradient if here i want to find out what is the gradient then this is the gradient okay this is the tan theta tan of this particular thing so can can you tell me that where uh, it uh, uh, gradient is higher at this point gradient is higher why because this point the function is increasing at the large, higher speed than this particular point here the increase increment is slower and but here the increment is high in in one distance if i just consider the unit distance over here the increment would be higher and if i consider the unit distance over here the increment would be lesser this increment is lesser than this increment so all right so what how can we minimize this function if we want to minimize the function what we should do if we want to minimize the function what should we do the the answer is that uh, if you have a function and if you are at this particular moment you try to find out what is the gradient gradient is this particular value so you go into the reverse direction of the gradient and you move a step into this particular direction and you come over here and then from here you come over here from here you come over here from here you come over here if you start over here gradient gradient is into this direction so you go ahead by this 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 and you are going to reach over here gradients give you that how much increment it is here you see that the gradient would give you that there is a decrement so you go into the side of decrement because you want to decrease decrease this 
so you would be reaching this particular point so this is how the gradient uh, you this is what this particular line means that you want to push, push the things into the again the same example once again 10 8 you see that what is the square of the error then you find out how the summation is you find out the summation comes out to be 114 the summation is 1 by 4 you divide by 2 by 9 the jw comes out to be this value all right so this is the formulation this uh, means you uh, it, it tells you that uh, how to and now i'm going to give you the answer that how to find out the value of w so i say that randomly you start you, you pick any randomly you randomly you pick some value of the w Okay, randomly pick, and then with every training example, with every block of the training example, you what you do that you update the weights means you change the weights such that the JW decreases. The JW decreases. So how to find out the, how the JW should decrease? So you see the what is the gradient of JW. So this is the uh, this comes from the calculus. This is the partial of the partial WJ. And you you want to find out the partial derivative of JW with respect to the WJ, and you are multiplying with a small factor so that something is going to give you that you go into this speed, you control the speed, and you modify this thing weights by this thing. And when you are going to modify this thing, uh, you modif keep modifying the weights means your weights are changing, and uh, until you find out that the weight are now not changing, and therefore you are at the minimum thing. Once again, let me tell you. Initially, you have some value of W. So you know that what is the what is the J means what is the J, what is the error that you have. Then you see that in moving in which direction your error is going to be reduced. So it is a kind of hill climbing thing. You find out that in which direction the error is going to be reduced. So you take the step over there so that your J decreases. And when your J decreases, J is decreasing because of W's are changing. You would be changing your W. How you are changing the W? You are seeing that this is a gradient. This is a direction. Therefore, you are updating the W, the JW with the JW minus some value. All right. The J would be smaller. If they are smaller, then therefore the summation is smaller because this is ultimately a summation formula, and this is going to be a summation thing. So you see that one by one things are going to be adjusted toward the minimum. But the problem is it is going to adjust it to the local minimum only. So here alpha is called the learning rate, very important parameter, and alpha is small enough, then the JW is decreased in every iteration and guaranteed to converse. Uh, susceptible to local minima, because most of the time it reaches to the local minima, not the global minima. But you would be asking that, sir, you have tell, told me this particular thing that how 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 I find out the del of this value, means partial of this particular JW. So this is the computation that tells that JW, this is the formula, no? you know the formula, 1 upon 2M summation of this thing is square. Okay, and uh, my task is to find out the partial derivative. So that's very easy. Let me just tell you that don't, don't fear about this. So part, this partial derivative term would go inside because it's a summation. That part's individual term summation, partial derivative is going to be applied on the individual items. And then it is a square term, the so 2 would come out and then the two power reduces. That is not a big thing. Everybody knows from the calculus that it comes out to be this, and similar to this. And uh, therefore, ultimately, since you know that the yi is the multiplication of this thing, therefore, if you take the derivation with respect to wj, so you get the wj only with respect to any example. So therefore, this comes out to be whatever this value. This comes out to be very elegant formula that for all the training examples, you find out what is the difference between the output and what is the difference between the actual expected output and you multiply with the x j and then y you divide by 1 by m and you are getting this value all right the same 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 equation same same algorithm here instead of writing del i am just putting this value because we have computed <laughs> all right so so at every step it evaluates all the training example and uh, this is the scenario this is one this image is coming second time because if we are using j at this particular location we are here and we are going down we may reach at this point if we are here we may go down into here somewhere we are here we may come down here also but if we are here we can go down to the global minimum so this is the global minimum but these are the local minimum they are local minimum possible so sometime so this is the surface real landscape is like that so therefore most probably you may be stuck into some local minima that is a problem so this is an example where uh, where i have taken x1 x2 x3 and these y values i think it is the same example that we had okay 
So here uh, what I'm going to do that uh, these are the target values. I have put the learning value is equal to 0 0.11 and I started with the W is equal to 0 0.5 initial values I have taken all the W 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 so when you take this thing, your J comes out with 396, all right, 0.66, all right. So if you take one step with alpha is equal to one, your Ws will be this values. You know the formula, if you apply your Ws will be this, then J would increase. In next step again, they are increasing and the J increase, J increase, J increase. You see that it is not going to converse though. Next thing that if your things are not working, you change the value of J, alpha is 0 0.001 then you see that things are converging no no things are still not converging or this is still not converging you change this value to alpha 0 0.001 then you see that from 0 0.5 you see that the value are going to reduce j is going to reduce number one thing your things are not working change the values of alpha you have to find out manually that do something so that you can come up with some value of alpha and then when you find out the value of alpha you find out the value of alpha then uh, you run the algorithm multiple number of time you see that the initially we started with these rates and but after some time after 300 iteration we find out 0 0.50 0 0.207 the appropriate values okay with these appropriate value you see that the j's means the difference between the output given and the actual output is going to be very small after 3000 inputs this is the input so you see that that uh, how the things are working and you are getting better and better results sometimes people say that it is better that instead of using 10 50 and 20 you scale these features means you you in this table you find out what is the minimum and maximum value and you subtract the minimum value from all these values and you divide by the difference between maximum and minimum so there was somewhere there would be one as all other places there would be zero so you change this data here is one and here is one similarly here is one here is zero here is one and two places there is one because two places same value would have been there here is zero if you do do this kind of feature scaling and you appropriately set the learning rate then you can see that again the j is going to decrease and you see that in 18 iteration you find out your error was 24 into the previous thing 3000 it was 24.7 okay in the 18 iteration you are near to that 3000 iteration your error is 20 means you are going to be very fast reaching towards the solution all right uh, so the similar kind of thing you can apply for the classification also this uh, if I ask you the same you understood all those things that we have talked about and now my question is different I'm not telling that here my output is a value here it is a class 0 and 1 okay then how can I go ahead with this okay how can I go ahead with this if the values are 0 and 1 it's just a class then uh, the better way so you can use a uh, logistic regression and uh, logistic regression says that whatever the uh, linear combination that you got you don't apply the same, same value you apply a sigmoid over also and after the sigmoid it sigmoid is going to give you the value from 0 to 1 and therefore you can treat that value as a probability of the classification then you can use that probability of classification for the classification okay because you are by this you are going to get some value and you put this into the sigmoid function sigmoid function is going to give you we have seen earlier also that it gives you the value between 0 and 1 so you you see that this is the sigmoid function 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus v this is given a value if you if you find put into this formula 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus y so it's a sigmoid of that particular value so 0 sigmoid of 0 is 0 0.5 because 0 if you put over here it becomes 1 so 1 upon 2 is 0 0.5 so when this kind of function you have then if the probability is greater than 0 0.5 means if you put over here you get value 0 greater than 0 0.5 you say that it is positive less than 0 0.5 you say it is negative so this is the one way to go ahead with the classification all right interesting so uh, but the point is that when you use this kind of mechanism for the classification you actually construct a decision boundary and uh, basically if your function are complex enough you can come up with a complex decision boundary otherwise the very simple decision boundary is the line so you can even uh, construct the high order polynomial to create the higher and complex boundaries okay we are not going to go into the detail but uh, the point is 
that if you define your function into this way, earlier what was your y function that you are just taking the linear combination. But now I am telling, can you please repeat the sigmoid function, alright. The sigmoid function is a special kind of function, this is a function given if I give you a value you put into this function 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus v. Okay, so if you put over 0 over here, e to the power minus 0 or e to the power 0, any value to the raised to the power 0 becomes 1, therefore it is 1 upon 1 plus 2 becomes 0 0.5. So at 0, it gives you 0 0.5 and uh, but if you increase the value, it it uh, reaches towards the 1, asymptotes towards the 1, means the maximum value is going to be 1 only. If you reduce the value of e, means you put the negative values, you are again getting lesser and lesser value and it reaches to the 0. So therefore the value this particular function gives you the value into the range of 0 and 1. You understand this? So therefore if uh, uh, our same thing that was a linear combination thing, if I the same linear combination thing, uh, uh, if you apply the sigmoid over here then you can utilize this as a probability of being positive or negative. So if this value comes out to be greater than 0 0.5 you say that it is positive otherwise it is negative, alright. So we can utilize this function into this way, therefore whatever the linear combination was there, we applied a sigma sigmoid over there, alright. So, okay, so we have talked about this in boundary. So this is we wanted to find out that how good we are. So again the same, same kind of formulation we can use how good we are by putting the JW that is the same formulation. But the point is that this function is not com, this time it is not convex. What do we mean by non-convex? Means uh, we want uh, to, to this we have we were able to find out the solution into the previous cases because our function was this kind of function where there is some some, some minima and everything is like that means so whenever we pick, pick two point the, this point is actually above, above but if we change this kind of function we use sigmoid over there so sigmoid function over there then what become that this function becomes this kind of thing. So therefore you see that there is some problem into this scenario, we take the point, it comes out, comes comes here and there. So therefore the biggest, uh, the technical term for this that uh, the function is actually not convex. The function is not convex, so we should use a convex function because if we are not using the convex function, we cannot apply the gradient descent mechanism. This is the next kind of function, you say that do not use this function, use this function. And that uh, the given these two value you want to find out what is the distance, so you have actually subtracted and taken the square instead of you what you do, you um, you take the log of this and 1 minus log of this, you take the log if the, if the classification was 1, you take the 1 minus log if it is, uh, it is otherwise means that it is 0, alright. So the function actually you can into thing is one line you can now put this function into this form means given two values these are the two values uh, let me tell you that what this function is so that it becomes not difficult for you alright. So this function is this that uh, this this is the function okay this is the function this is the function okay that I want to talk about okay. So there are two parts, minus is there, minus and minus, therefore they are added. So everywhere there was minus, therefore minus and minus. This is the this is the thing, okay, this thing and multiplied with the yi. So when yi is equal to 0, okay, okay, you see the multiplication, when yi is equal to 0, so therefore this term would vanish, are you with me, this term would vanish, but this term would prevail because y is 0 then 1 minus 0 is 1. So therefore nothing more than that it is going to see that only this term would be effective, only this part is going to be effective. It is going to say that this part is only going to be effective and uh, this is only going to give you one value that is 1. So therefore 1 multiplied by something is not going to have any effect because y could be only 0 and 1 you know na, classification could be 0 and 1. So if it is 0, it is 1 therefore this value is going to be given and this complete thing vanishes. Similarly, if y is equal to 1, what happened? This thing completely vanishes because this gives you 0, it just vanishes and therefore it was multiplied by nothing more than this log term. So you see that this log term is here, the same log term is, is here, this was the function given to you and this term is actually here. So you say that, you see that the, the, this can be combined into one way, this is another way to write the function, alright, okay. So now I am going to use this function 
and uh, therefore we have to minimize that the same function written into the expanded form. So if you go ahead, the same kind of logistic regression you can apply because now it is a convex function. So you can apply the same thing over here. You can modify the W's. All right. So there is a one way to tell you that uh, how to find out derivation. Again, you see that the earlier also we have saw that how to find out the derivatives and uh, this this was all we have to do the ex experiments. One minute, I'm sorry for that. So this was again a problem that we have find out uh, this thing. So similarly, the same thing we have to do into this case also. So if you find out this computation, so it comes out to be that uh, this was the formulation. You want to find out the derivative. So you apply the derivative two places. You say that this is the A and B. Then you find out the derivative of A. It gives you this particular formulation. Similarly for the B, it gives you the, this particular formulation. So uh, I'm not going to detail into this mathematics. Everything is there. You please see this. If you find out anywhere there is a problem, I can go in, inside and tell you that with this particular differentiation, okay? Okay, somebody is asking, sir, what is the harm in using the non-complex function, uh, non-convex function? So actually, na look, non-convexity means what? Non-convexity means fast. I, I, I just want to give you one function that is non-convex, okay? Let's assume this is the non-convex function, okay? Okay, this is the non-convex function. Let me write, let me once again say, give you the right way, okay? Okay. Okay, this is the non-convex function. Why? Because if I take the points, if I take the uh, convex function is that function, if you take two values and see the midpoint, they should be inside the things, but it is outside. Here, however, here it follows the things. Here it follows that particular rule. So if I take two points over here, it is inside. So what would happen if I take some point or here it throws me here, throws me here, throws me here, throws me here, at the end I would be able to reach you at this particular point. So this, into this particular range, it is convex, okay? This thing convex. So what would happen if I start over here, I would reach to this particular point. I would start over here, I would reach to some particular point. So a lot of local minimas are there. So I would be stuck into this particular location. I would not be able to reach this particular location. That is the local minimum. So my problem formulation should be such that, that it give you a local minimum into the lo nearby area. If let's assume that my problem was this, that if this was a function, if uh, if this has been a function, if this has been function, then then wa was it better or not? Okay. So then if I start over, start uh, start at this point, I would reach here, 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 and I would reach to this particular portion. Okay. So you understand that what is the non-convex function? First you understand what is the non-convex function? That my earlier function was non-convex convex because I was taking two point and it was coming out of that particular boundary. Those function actually have lot of local minima and we want to avoid them to for a global solution because we want global solution. All right. So uh, I think you should, uh, you can go ahead with this mathematics. I can also go ahead, but uh, just to, uh, give you the understanding that how it is done. I'm telling this that you similarly take, just apply the calculus, you would be able to find out these value. Put this thing into equation, they nicely solve and give you this kind of formulation. That is again the similar and same kind of formulation that we have find out earlier. You see, so all right, the partial derivative of the term this comes out to be this, and which is exactly the same kind of thing that we have talked earlier, so here also we are going to use to the same kind of function. This is why we have used the log term so that at the end we get the same kind of formulation. But the but wait, only one point is there that here yi is not the linear combination. It is actually linear combination then raised to the uh, sigma i. So this is only the difference means uh, linear combination is applied on the sigma i. Therefore yi is a different function that we already talked about that it is not the same function. But uh, the the way we apply into the logistic regression is going to be the same, all right? So this is how if you modify the weights, then we are going to reach to the final solution, all right? So again, my question is, let's assume that these are the data points, the randomly picked data point, randomly given classification, learning rate is this. We have seen that 
J was 0.6912 if when we started with the W of 0.555 and ultimately it is going to reduce after 25, 30 and 30,000 iteration you get 0 0.001 means nearly perfect. We are going to be nearly perfect. All right. So how we find out the log term means so you see that how, how, how you find out this J. So if you want to find out this J you have to go and see in the equation weights are this value is going to be this then uh, y i is equal to sigma i on this particular thing log term is this so for all these values for this thing y i y was given one then value is this you can can you find out this 3.52 can you help me to find out this value okay because this v is actually defined by the linear combination so what are the weights w p 0 0.5 0 0.5 so you put 0 0.5 I just take this and put it here for your convenience. Okay, let me tell you. Let me put it here. So I am telling that this is the formula. So what is the formula? This is the formula. This is the formula. Here uh, I need the value of W0. W0 is 0 0.5. W1 0 0.5. W2 0 0.5. W3 0 0.5. It is multiplied by X0. That is no way. X1 is multiplied by X1. That is 2. So it is multiplied by 2. And then it is added multiplied by 2. Then it is multiplied by 2. And 0 0.5 is added. Can you find out what is the value? Can you find out what is the value? Can you find out? Nobody can find out? 3.5, all right. It is 3.5. So it is written over here. Similarly, you can find out all these values for each of them. How to find out yi? Yi is equal to, and this is not the value, you have to put into the sigma. So you put in 1 plus e to the power minus 3.5. <coughs> so you get this value. This is the yi, all right. So for each of these values, this you should compute. That is the important thing. And then you have to compute the log term that is putting into this to, because J is the summation of these things. Na? J is the summation of these things. So you know the what is the Y and what is this particular value. So you put into this formula, you get all these things. You find out the summation. So and divide by 10 because 10 examples are here. You get 6.9. All right. So you get this point 6.9 so this is the verification that how you got this value when you got this value then you have to find update the weights how to update the weights this is the MR formula how to update the weights you know that the weights are this at this moment and term ti what is the ti for every item they could x x1 x2 x3 i get also added x0 because x0 is needed to be added this is the dummy parameter that actually used for the modifying the value of w, uh, w0, w1, w2, w3. So yi means you, yi is the term that you say that it is, uh, you put the this particular item, so you, this 0 0.970, so this you have seen 0 0.970, this value. All these values are put over here. What is the value of y? Understand, what the t0, term 0 is, means you differentiate and find out the difference between this term and the actual but this you got, but your thing should be this. So you find out the difference and you multiply with the one, multiply with the two, you find out this thing. This is, you see this term? And this is what the inside term, nah? This is the inside term. For every item, you are going to find out this thing. And then you find out summation, divide by m. All right. So for every term, you are actually finding out the difference of this item with this item, multiplying by this. So therefore, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four items you get. And you find out the summation, and uh, then you total is this. You um, divide by an alpha that is 0, 0.0. Multiply with the alpha and divide by the number of items. You then see that the, how the value is modified. You see that these are the new values. So you see that in the formula, new values. How we get the new values? All right, we have seen two things, and uh, if you 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 have no, known that given the w how to find out j, given the j how to find out new new things, then you go ag again means given this thing find out j modify this find out j modify this keep doing keep doing keep doing until you see that the j is smaller enough all right so how it is going to affect your classification when 
when you are into the iteration one, your classification for all these items was one actually. Okay. If you put into the formula, try to see that what is the classification, all the things one. Are in the hundredth iteration, means that this is the hundredth iteration. I think somewhere here when the parameters were these parameters, then if you have used those parameters to find out the classification, your classification all zero. In the 300 iteration, you see that 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 kind of thing. In the 500 iteration, you see that all 1s and 0, it is a perfect classification that we wanted. And after that, if you go, means even if you, after 500 iterations, you you go ahead, means here, so you see that the error is becoming smaller, means the boundaries are getting tighter, but your classification has already, already become correct. So this is how you see that, how, when you progress that how your classification changes all right so is that clear to you is this thing clear any questions so that's that's all for today so we are done with the today's session and uh, uh, it is very good that we have very early finished this so we can talk about something that how we have done i'm going to once again repeat everything uh, you please ask the question if you have any. So, <laughs> all right. Once again, listen to these things. So, we we wanted uh, we are we have seen a problem that is called the regression. In the regression, values are given to you, and y is the output that is going to give you some integer value, fractional value, some value you are going to get. Okay, it's not the classification; it's the value you are going to get. Then you want to come up with a function that appropriately fit this particular training. These are things are fit training. And when a new thing comes for the testing, you will be able to tell that what is the actual value. So uh, our approach is to define a linear model. And that tells that uh, we have a lot of W's and with, with one motor, more than the number of parameters, we are multiplying them with the uh, X. And then we are going to see that what is the linear combination. And then I'm going to put this value uh, into the table and try to see that how how it, this value differs with the actual value. All right. So let's assume that you have some W. I'm not talking about which W you have. And by this W, you computed this thing. So you can also compute for new item also. How good you are would be given by a squared sum function. And one such function is a squared error cast function. And here it is telling that you take that whatever you predicted, what is the actual value, see, take the square. All right. So if you want to go ahead with this, so these values were given to you. This was the actual value. You try to see what is the difference of a square, and then you see that so find out summation, divide by 2m number of items. You see that this value comes out to be. So this is how this this much good it is. And what you want, you want this value to be zero. Difference should be zero because then each these values should be exactly the same thing. All right, how to reduce this? Okay, one way to find out that what is the gradient of this particular thing with respect to the every W, and uh, you multiply with the alpha and you proceed into that direction because proceed into the reverse direction because the, uh, the gradient is telling that uh, this is the way to go increase this value. So you want to decrease the value, therefore you subtract that value and then you go into the reverse direction and uh, by this you reduce the value of J overall JW, all right? So we have seen that this formula, there is a, uh, you can apply the calculus to find out the simplification thing that you still tells that for all the items, you find out the summation or what is the difference and for with that particular attribute value, you multiply and take the summation, that is enough. So it tells that for every, uh, for, for every attribute, you multiply with the attribute value, what is the difference across all the data items and you divide by one upon m, multiply by the small parameter alpha and C, modify the weights by this formula wj minus this. All right, the problem is that sometimes it can get stuck into the local minima, how to come out of that, you have, that is a, again a different question, kind of question. But uh, we have seen an example that if we have, this was the question, then alpha was 0 0.1, we see that it's not converging, with different value not converging, but if when we discover the right value, we see that there is a converse. And then we would be very near to the our answer if we apply the number of, sufficient number of iteration sometime. 
this number becomes very large. So we want to quickly convert. And if you want to quickly convert, you should do the feature scaling, change all the values into the range of 0 and 1. And you see that the, within 18 iteration, it has achieved the same thing that earlier we were able to achieve into the 3,000 iterations. All right, this is the way to scale. Now we have a different problem. And sometimes if I, instead of asking that what is the value, if I ask that what is the classification, then it is called the <coughs> logistic regression problem, where we are focusing on the classification. And here, nothing changes except that the instead of the leaning, using linear model, we are applying another function that is called the logistic function. And logistic function is similar for a very simple function, 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus v. Why we have choose this thing? Because on the 0, it gives 0 0.5. If you put any positive value greater than 0 0.5, put negative value less than 0 0.5. Value lies between 0 and 1. So we we are more uh, we understand more things that if it is value is 0 and 1, we can say that what is the probability of this item being 1. So this notion is important because we can say that if the probability is greater than 0 0.5, I can say that it is category 1. Otherwise, category 0. All right. But the point is that when we are using these kind of this kind of sigmoid function over there, then this function becomes non-convex. So we are telling that uh, with the one remedy for this that we would not use this kind of similar function. We are using a different kind of function that is taking log on one minus log of this thing. Then we are getting this kind of formulation. That is again a very good kind of formulation. That is a single line. The function has been modified, and we have seen that. So if we can find out the derivatives of this particular new, newly constructed function, then again we can apply the same logistic regression over here also to find out the appropriate parameter. Again, I am telling that we would start from the random parameters and we would modify the parameter in such a way so that at the end we would be reaching to the right parameters. All right, so there is a lot more mathematics and all these things are very easy. I'm just telling d upon dx upon x to the power minus 1 is equal to minus 1 x to the power minus 2. Log x, differentiation of log x is 1 upon x. Differentiation of something to the function of something comes out to be taking 1 upon sin x log d upon dx, that is cos x. So similarly, you can find out that this is how we can find out the differentiation. All right. The JW function is given into this way. If you take the differentiation, it comes out to be this. And uh, you take that uh, 1 upon a 1, 2, and minus a and b. If I put that, these are the two terms. And then individually, I am going to find out their differentiation. And then putting into the single formula, again, putting a single formula. Again, I can see that there is a nicely come formula. The very similar to the previous formula comes to me. It means that that uh, this difference, this particular uh, uh, derivative comes out to be this very simple, nicely looking formula. If I put into the same thing, both the equations, the earlier, earlier algorithm and this algorithm looks exactly same. The only difference is that here y was, there the y was, given the y, we were finding the linear combination. But here we are, apart from the linear combination, we are applying a sigmoid over there. All right, again, we have seen one thing that uh, given these items and uh, the alpha, we can see that if we apply the similar mechanism, we will be able to find out the value of, we will be able to see the converts note down when the items are linearly separable then only we can find out the exact convergence otherwise there will be problems okay it would be going to give you the best fit some item would definitely be misclassified all right so we have seen that given this thing given the because initially we start by the weights given these weights what is the j we have to find out the j we have seen that this is the method how to find out the j Given taken the j, we can we would modify this thing to this thing. How to modify? We have seen that this is the how to modify these things. So everything that we have seen over there into terms of the algorithm here, the we have put into the terms of table so that you can see them that actually how the things are happening. So you change it again, find out j again, change it again, find out j. See the j is continuously decreasing. It's tough when you find out the sufficient small number of the j, then you use these parameter to use the classification for all these items. All right, this is how we are going to do. So we have seen this thing that uh, as the iteration produce, uh, progresses, initially the class of, in the first iteration all the items were told one. In the hundredth iteration, all the items were told zero. Three hundred iteration we find out there was somewhere one, somewhere zero. But we have seen into the 5 and 8th iteration, we have find nearly all the items are classified correctly.
that's all for today any more questions please let me know so i'm going to close this recording